were very, very surprised. Um, Pastor Robert and Elaine, God bless you from Parkway Assembly and Pastor Greg and his lovely wife. God bless you, sister. You surprised the heck out of us. I'll tell you that right now. Praise God. Pastor Greg, why don't you come up and open us in prayer? And then I'm going to have just Pastor Bob come up and greet you. Praise the Lord. My brother has said that we could, I could uh, pray to start off this evening. And I asked, you know, as we were in worship, the, you know, what did the Lord want me to pray about? So, so just bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, you've said that we should come with expectation tonight. Lord, not expecting anything of ourselves, anything that we are looking for, but Lord God, that we would be open and expecting to hear from you and that your spirit would move in this body tonight, and that we would be ready, willing, and able, Lord God, to receive from you this night. Lord God, you've said receive. You said come with expectation. And I pray, Lord God, that we would open ourselves. Open, open, open ourselves, Lord God, to all that you want us to receive this night. Continue to touch all those who minister, especially, Lord God, uh, the, the, the dear pastor who's going to be preaching tonight, Lord, in your word. Lord God, we pray that you would just continue to anoint him, Lord God, with a powerful anointing, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would just fill this place to overflowing with your presence. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They came all the way from Norwalk, Connecticut. That's three hours. Yeah. So, Pastor, come on up here. Amen. Pastor, he just took over the pastorate up in Parkway, and he's doing a wonderful job. And we were up there a couple of weeks ago just with his installation. And, you know, Pastor Bob and Greg and us, we all been knit, knitted together, and we just love each other, and we're just so glad that you came. And so you surprised us, brother. Praise God. We want to first of all say thank you to this church for praying for us over the last several months as we have uh, taken on a responsibility out of retirement but refired. And um, God's been good, and I want to. I, I just want to thank this church because your pastor, along with Pastor Saunders and Pastor Hickey, who you know as well, are the spirits, my spiritual advisors in this work that God has been doing. And let me just give you just a little bit of what has happened over the last couple of months. It's only been two months, six weeks actually, uh, that we've been there officially as the pastor, and we've begun to see a church that was badly fractured, a church board that was badly fractured. When you give it over to God, God said, uh, I'm going to expose the foundation, which he did. And uh, we are in the rebuilding process of what God, only God can do. It's not about men, it's about him, and it must always be that way. And I want to share with this congregation today that this past Sunday, this past Sunday especially, uh, we had an old-fashioned Holy Ghost service that came out. The anointing was strong, the worship was great, and we are beginning to see, the numbers are coming back up, and, and we are beginning to see what God has is beginning to do. You know, in, in the church complex, there's a hall. It's called Heritage Hall. Uh, and there are the pictures of some of the events that have taken place over the years. And one of those pictures shows that the church was filled to overflowing and everything was taking place. And I stood there and I looked at those pictures. And, I, and in my heart, I heard God speak. And he said, what do you want? And I said, Lord, I want to see the church restored to this point. And he said to me clearly, that is the, the past. I've got something more I've got for you. So we're excited about what God is doing. And this church is very much a part of that ministry. And we love your pastors very much. And we have become really close friends. Now, Brother Diamond, we spoke on the phone in San Diego. And Brother Langevin told me last week, see, we, we had this plan that we were coming when Brother Langevin told us when we saw that you were coming this week, he said, I'll arrange FaceTime. So this is the face and this is the time. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> well, praise God. Hallelujah. Are we on FaceTime, by the way? We are. Well, we want to welcome those who are listening by Facebook right now. I, I talked to uh, Brother Sajiv in India, and the work is going well. We were able to forward him some money. Uh, they're having a crusade. And, and, and listen to this. Check this out. Okay? There's over 200 people coming for this first crusade that he's holding. And most of them have never heard about Jesus before. They're in their remote villages, and we, we paid for the transportation for them to come to this crusade. And he said, brother, when you come next year, he says, we're going to do one bigger than this. And so I'm believing God's going to do mighty miracles and, and uh, do some great things in India. Uh, God is blessing our, inst uh, our Bible Institute in India, in Bangalore, India. We started one. We got 12 students already, and they're already excited to go out and preach the gospel. And uh, I'll tell you, brother, there's 260 villages that have never heard the name of Jesus before, and these are the ones he wants to reach. And so I know that uh, we're, pa we're partnering with um, uh, uh, Pastor Layton, and uh, we're going to be uh, sending a monthly support for him and for the ministry. And we're just so excited. And I know that uh, Pastor Manny is going to do that. Pastor Amaral is doing that. So anybody that wants to get on board, just... Um, let us know, and we'll give you the um, PayPal information. You can go on, and you can donate, and it's really easy. And uh, praise God for what God's doing. Amen? He's coming soon. Amen? So without further ado, we want to give most of the time to Brother Diamond. You know, uh, we just love Brother Diamond. We've known him for over 10 years, and he's been coming back and forth, and we've been going back and forth down there. And, and he's just a, a really anointed brother, speaks in the prophetic at times, and he's going to probably give you some testimonies of what has happened in Oklahoma and stuff like that. And uh, we're just excited to have you back, brother. You're always welcome in our assembly. We love you, brother. Come on, take your, take your liberty. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn around and tell somebody, say, well, I think I'm glad to be here. Hallelujah. Well, since the last time I saw y'all, I'm a new man from my knees down. Hallelujah. I, I, I've, I've had a double uh, knee replacement. Uh, had it done in June uh, the 13th. And um, God, uh, I, I, after uh, uh, nine weeks, I went back to see the doctor, and he said, he said, Preacher, he said, I've never had anybody like you. He said, you're six months out. You're only, you're only uh, nine weeks. He said, you must be living right. I said, well, let me give you, let me give you a verse. He said, I knew you was going to preach to me. I said, the Bible says that if you uh, keep God number one and you help the hurting, and reach out to the lost, God said your health will spring forth speedily. I said, you see, God can accelerate a healing process in your body. Come on, say amen, somebody. And uh, so I, I, I'm expecting about another month, I'm going to be, uh, uh, you, you, you know, uh, hooping and hollering and running and jumping and leaping and Shouting, but right now I'll let y'all do that tonight for me. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 it's so good to be here. I, I, uh, Bob and Linda's like family to us. Uh, and, uh, you know, you just meet some folks. And uh, just like the pastor, I, I, I spoke to the pastor out in San Diego. And I think it was FaceTime, wasn't it? Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't we on FaceTime? Or did we do FaceTime? Yeah. And, and uh Lord, I hung that phone up and I said, Lord, I, I, I said, I need for you to just translate me out to San Diego. I said, I, I, done, I done located some more holy rollers. Come on, I get around and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the real deal is hard to find. I, I, I've been in this thing 46 years and uh, what I see today taking place in a lot of churches uh, uh, God help America. Can I get a good amen? You know, everybody wants to, you, you know, one of the big things in large churches and everything, you know, they want, they want to get them fog machines in there. 
you know, blow smoke up in air and all. And, and you know, they, 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 they say they create in the atmosphere of the, of the Shekinah glory. I said, that ain't Shekinah, that's shenanigan. I mean, come on, why, why have shenanigan when you can have Shekinah? Slip your hand up and say, come on, Holy Ghost. Well, I, I, I tell you, I, I love giving fresh testimonies, and I was just up in uh, Spyro, Oklahoma, and <clears throat> little little little, um, little little Assembly of God church, and and uh, I say little, I mean fairly good sized little church, but it's out in the middle of nothing. And uh, how many of you know God shows up in the middle of nowhere? And so uh, I was there Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. And when I'm at a place two or three days, I make the last service, Holy Ghost Miracle a night or, or service because I want to build people's faith. How many of you know uh, without faith it is impossible to please him? And see, all things are possible to him that, say it again. Say it one more time. See, if I can just get you to believe in there's a miracle for you. If I can get you to believe in, there's a deliverance for you. Uh, because all things are possible to him that believeth. And so uh, over, the, over the years, uh, God has, has uh, blessed me where, where uh, he has visited the services and, 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 and supernatural miracles have taken place. I, I tell about Priscilla all over the place. Matter of fact, I got it on my cell phone, her, her testimony. Uh, I take it everywhere I go. I remember when you know it was over on the other side, and uh, she was there, you know, sitting in a wheelchair. Y'all remember that? She's sitting in the back, kind of. And uh, I walk back there, and and uh, I, I might miss a few points here, but uh, uh, it went something like this. I said, "What are you doing in that wheelchair?" And, and uh, she, she, I said, "How long have you been in that wheelchair?" She said, "Over two years." And I said, uh, well, what happened to you? She said, well, I had lupus. And I, I, my medication attacked my joints uh, and, and, and ate my joints up or something, whatever it was. And I said, well, I, I, said, uh, I said, God, go heal you. I said, uh, you come tomorrow night. Wasn't it the next night? I think it was the next night. Well, no, it might have been the miracle night, whatever it was. Uh, you should have been there, and then you could have reminded me. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and so... Uh, 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 so I, I said, uh, you, I, I said you're going to be the first one I pray for. And sure enough, she came back. I said, I want you to bring all your friends. Well, she brought her boyfriend with her. Lord, he looked like a serial killer. I mean, he is all tattooed up. There wasn't. A, I mean, if he didn't want another tattoo, you'd have had to pull his eyeball out and put it on it because there wasn't no space left. And uh, I, I mean, he had look. He and and and. Uh, 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 he looked like, to me, I mean, he looked like one of them earring racks on, on a counter. He had so many earrings in his, on his body and stuff. They could have set him out there on, in Macy's, uh, you know, up on the counter, you know, as an earring rack. Uh, so he came and, and had all, her mom and daddy was there, I think. Or, you know, I mean, they had about 17 folks come. She was sitting right on, on the front row. I, yeah, I think she said, anyhow, wherever she said. And so that night, you know, we got ready to, and, and, and I, I love this. Y'all remember this. My son came with us, and uh, he said, well, Dad, he said, can I bring a friend? Because I had my, 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 my son, and we played music. And uh, 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 so my son, Nicholas, said, Dad, uh, can I bring uh, a, a friend of mine? He's a musician. He, he can play the drums. I can play the keyboard, stuff like this. And uh, he, he said, but... But, but, but he ain't saved. I said, I, I, said, I said, that's all right. Bring that heathen. He, he plays up in them honky-tonks and everything else. About time he played in church. And he said, well, he'll be respectful. I said, yeah, I'll knock him out if he don't. And so uh, they brought him, and uh, we all stayed at y'all's house. And uh, so he was there. He was sitting back there on them drums. I'll never forget <laughs> And so, you know, we, we got ready to minister and everything. And, and I said, all right. I said, you're going to be the first one. And we'd worship God, and he's sitting over on the drum. And, and I, I began to talk to her, and she was sitting there. And so he was standing up, the, the, the earring uh, serial killer. He's standing there. 
And I said, uh, well, I was talking a bit. I said, uh, you ever seen a miracle? You ever seen God work a miracle? No. I said, where are you going to? Get out of that chair. Y'all remember? I said, whoa, get out of that chair. Man, he jumped back. He scared him half to death. Well, it, uh, and, and when she started getting up, it, it, it scared, uh, yeah, Brian, I think his name. He fell off the drums. He, he ain't never seen it. He, to this day, he tells everybody that, I tell you what, you don't believe in miracles? He said, I saw one. And uh, uh, she walked, and I, I backed up, and she walked. Well, now, you know, she's done been around the world, been over to the Muslim world. God touched her. I think there's nine or ten different things wrong with her. And, and she would went blind, her hair fell out, uh, 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 you, you know, uh, uh, kidney failure, all this kind of stuff. But God healed her. Why don't you slip your hand up and say, oh, I believe, hallelujah. You see, all things are possible to him that believeth. So uh, that Wednesday night, you know, up there in Oklahoma, uh, 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 the pastor had to leave uh, because uh, his son-in-law, his, his father, his son-in-law's father, they thought he was having a heart attack, so he had, he had to meet him at the hospital. And, and uh, I've been there for years. And he said, look, uh, associate will open up the service, and you just take over, Brother David. That's just whatever God tells you to do, you do it. And uh, so... They sang one song, they gave it to me. And so I got up, and I said, uh, Oh, victory, victory, it is mine. I said, victory, oh, sweet victory, oh, it is mine. If I hold my peace, and let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, I said victory, it is mine. And, and so I sang it. You know, I said, all right, come on. Everybody stand up and sing it with me. And I said victory. And when I said victory, the Lord spoke to me. Because out in the congregation, I saw this family sitting out there who is a member of the church. They were there. They always been there. But with them... On this Wednesday night, the Holy Ghost Miracle Night, they had brought a blonde-headed uh, young lady with them in mid-20s or, or early 30s, and uh, she was sitting with them. And when I, when I said, Victory, the Holy Ghost said to me, This song is for her. Walk out there and sing it to her and tell her, This song is for you. So you know me, I just, I, I just obey God. Scared her half to death. She thought I was coming to choke her or something, I guess. And so I, I just walked up to her, and I said, Victory! And, and you can tell when people are scared. Huh? You, you, you can tell. Uh, uh, you, you. And so I sang it to her. And I said, It is mine. If I hold my peace. I said, Listen to me, honey. God told me to tell you this is your song tonight. I said, because you got a report just today, something that terrified you, something that caused fear to grip your heart. I said, but if you'll hold, your, and she just starts bawling and squalling when I said, you got a report today. I said, and let the Lord Fight your battle. I said, you're in a battle in your mind right now, in your, in your heart, in your soul. You're battling because of that word. And she's just bawling and squalling. And I said, but God said, victory, victory, it is mine. So, uh, you know, I, I, I finished singing. Well, at least I call it singing. A lot of people call it tormenting. Uh, but uh, so uh, I went back up on stage, and, and I preached, you know, and then I got ready, and, and I was laying hands on the sick and everything else, you know, and we got through, and, and uh, I, I got, uh, I was wore out. Because I tell you, when you, you know, you're tomahawking people and slapping people and kicking people, uh, 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 you, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You get in one of my prayer lines, you either get healed or hurt. Somebody shout Hallelujah. 
And 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 so I was sitting down on the I, I was sitting down and every a bunch of young people came around, you know, and other people started coming around, and I, I felt like old Roberts. <laughs> you, you remember in, in the old days, old Roberts used to sit in a chair and, and pray for people. I, I'm sitting up there, and everybody, I said, "Whoo!" I said, I, "I said, call me Oral." And so here they come, and and, and they sat down. The 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 the, uh, the the lady in the church and her family and and this young lady, she's still crying and weeping. And she said, "Tell him, tell Brother Diamond." I said, "What you need to tell me?" And she said, "I got a report today." She said, "Let me show you." And she pulled out her cell phone, and on the cell phone was a picture of the sonogram of her thirteen-week-old baby. Hello, somebody. And the report they got, and she said, you see? And the, the little, in the sonogram, you can see the baby's head, and it's just got a mass on it, covered in a tumor. And, of course, they want to abort, and they want to do this, you know. And, and so uh, uh, Angela, the, the lady, had invited her, said, no, you, you, and this was her hairdresser. So she said, you know, you need to come to the miracle services. Brother, I've been telling you about it. He's crazy. He, he's nuts. He, he, he you, you, you know. And so she came. And she said, this is a report. And I said, now, isn't that, isn't that something? Or, I said, what's your name? She said, Stacy. I said, isn't that something, Stacy? I said, I was here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. You wasn't here because you hadn't got the report yet. I said, my paw-in-law used to always tell me, if I didn't think God knew where I was at, I'd find me a little sparrow done fell out of the nest. And he said, I'd go curl up by it because the Bible said God sees every little sparrow that falls. He said, he'd see you. And I said, isn't that amazing that you got that report today, this morning? And I said, but the song says, Victory! Victory, it is mine. I said, God's working a miracle. Don't abort that baby. You, you just go on. Well, she, that was on a Wednesday night. Well, she, she had a, a, an appointment the following Tuesday because every week they want to, you, you know, follow up with her. So it was Sunday morning. She came, she gave her, I was gone. Uh, Sunday morning in regular service, she comes and gives her heart to Jesus. Somebody shout Hallelujah. And so, man, she got gloriously born again and what have you know. And she couldn't wait to go back to the doctor Tuesday. So they took the, uh, 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 a new sonogram and, and, and what have you. And she called Angela crying. She said, Angela. And she said, oh, 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 what is it? Stay? She said, the preacher's right. She said, the doctor called me in and said 50% of the tumor's gone. He said, it done shrunk 50%. I, I wrote them. I wrote them on Facebook and everything. Messaged them, you know. I said, "All right." I said, "When's your next uh, 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 appointment?" She said, "The next Tuesday." Well, she went back. But they did it again. Now it's down to twenty-five percent. Oh, slip your hand up uh, and say, "Oh Lord, have mercy." God, when He does something, He does it right. I, I want to testify to you. I can't wait to get home and get the report. Woo! Hallelujah to God! I dare you to turn around and tell somebody. Say, ah! You see, we serve a miracle-working God. I, I love that little song I sing. It under, if you believe it, I know you can receive it right now. If you believe it, I know you can receive it right now. If you believe it, I know you can receive it. If you believe it, I know you can receive it. If you believe it, I know you can receive it right now. See, if you believe it, you can receive it. Doubt you do without. I tell people all the time, I said, let me tell you something. I want to invite, I, I invite everybody. At the bank, at the, I don't care, Walmart, what, I don't care where it is. Every time I go in, I'm inviting somebody. I said, you ever been in a wild, bucking, shaking service? Of course, they just look at you like you own dope or something. You know, people ain't used to that. You know, usually you might say, how you doing? How's your day going? You know, I just look at it and I said, have you ever... Been in a wild, bucking, shaking Holy Ghost service. And they, I mean, they do that. Who, who are you? And so you, I, I just love doing it. And I tell them, I said, well, let me tell you something. You want to come to my church? I said, bring a shout or stay out. Come on, somebody. 
I, I don't want to. I don't want to sit. I, I don't want to be around dead people. Come on, if I want to be around dead people, I'll go have service at the morgue. Come on, shout amen. You see, excitement draws people. You know, when I was when I when I was growing up, you, you know, they they never came to me and said, uh, <clears throat> um, "Hey, Diamond, you want to go to a party? We're going over to Mary Jane's tonight. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Ain't got no beer. Ain't got no alcohol over there. You don't go." You know what I told him? I don't think so. But you let him say, hey, Diamond, hey, man, Thursday night, Mary Jane's giving a party. And man, you know, Sexy Susie's going to be there. Come on. Well, see, now I'm getting excited. Because they're excited. Man, everything's going to be happening over there. Come on, somebody. And, and nowadays we... we, we uh, I'd like to invite you to church. We've got a wonderful church. We get happy at our church. Oh, I can see it's really affected you. I can't wait to I can't wait to come. Amen. So we, so so if we stay excited, praise God, we we'll, we'll, <clears throat> people will follow us. Turn around and tell somebody say he got me convinced, praise God, I'm going to believe so I can receive. Give the Lord a clap, clap offering. Come on. Can I, I want to take I, I want to take a few minutes. Uh, turn around and tell somebody. Uh, uh, and uh, pastors, y'all are new. Y'all never been around me. And uh, turn around and tell somebody. Said, "Blessed are the short-winded, for they shall be heard again." But that ain't brother David. Forget that. I'm not short-winded. Hallelujah. If you get tired, for I do. Don't try to leave here. I'll tackle you. You need the whole thing. Lock them doors. Praise God. Hey, let, let, and, and, and I, I'm going to talk a little bit to save a little time, and, and then I'll read the story. Why don't you make your way over to the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. This is the story of Paul. He's a prisoner. They're going to put him on a ship because he has to go to Rome. Hello. How many of you know every one of us have a destination? God gives us assignments. God assigns things to us and wants us to make it to where we need to make it to. There's a purpose to everything you go through in life. There's a purpose. We don't like some of the things God sends us through. But most of the time, it's not for us anyhow. It's for somebody else. Can I get a good amen? So Paul, in the book of Acts, it's amazing that it starts in Jerusalem. The Jews. Come on. We're Gentiles. You see, but God had a plan. And Paul, I feel the Holy Ghost, Paul had to get to Rome, which represented the world, the city. Hello. And Paul represented the gospel to the world. And so Paul had to get to Rome, and because when he gets there, what happens is the Jews reject the great story. And it's Acts chapter 28 that we read where he says, I'll now turn to the Gentiles. Why don't you slip your hand up and say, there's a destination. If I can get to, it's for a reason because God wants to reach somebody. God wants to help somebody. But we don't like these journeys sometimes, you know, that we're on. And so I want to talk to you just a little bit about... Uh, this voyage, this journey that Paul is on. He's got a destination. There's a reason that he's going. And there's things in our life you're going to find that you're on a journey. And God wants you to get 
to the end of that journey so the purpose can be fulfilled. So in Acts chapter 27, we read this. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, I, I'm going to jump all of my notes in. I'm going to just read and let the Holy Ghost just show me what he wants me to say. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. How many of you know the centurions was hated by the Jews because they were Gentiles? You know who always helped Jesus? A Gentile. Hello? There, 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 was the, uh, there was the centurion who had great faith in the power of Jesus in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. There was the centurion who recognized Jesus hanging on the cross as the Son of God in Matthew 27, 54. There was a centurion, Cornelius, who was the first Gentile convert to the Christian church, Acts 10, 22. There was a centurion who recognized that Paul was a Roman citizen and rescued him from the rioting mob in Acts chapter 23, verses 17 through 23. There was a centurion who took steps to deliver Paul from being murdered after being in, informed of the Jews' plan, Acts 24. 423. There was the center. It goes on down. Why don't you slip your hand up and say, Praise God, the most unlikely people that'll help you might not be the ones you think should help you. So here was a, a center. And entering into a ship of, uh, of, uh, of uh, whoever that is, that's tongues. And entering into a ship of. A, 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 you know, they didn't teach me that in public school. Anybody know that word? No, you don't know it either, so don't lie. Uh, we, la we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. Who? A, a dramatia. Well, that, that ain't what my note says. I, I looked it up. You, you, you know, in, in a Bible dictionary what they, where they talk to you now. You know, you, they, how many of you got one of them? You know, you, you don't know the pronunciation, but they pronounce it. So here, here's, what, here's, what, uh, here's what Siri said anyhow. I guess it's Siri on the Bible app. I don't know who it is. Adrama Tumas. Adrama Tumas. Isn't that something? Why don't you just say Adram? That'd be better. Delivered Paul and... So anyhow, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Artocost, a Macedonia of Thessalonica, being with us. So, so here they take off. And, uh, and the next day, uh, we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Slip your hand up and say, God, make your worst enemies be friends to you. You see, if you're in the will of God, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of you and be the very ones you, 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 you would never imagine would do it. But God will uh, uh, give you favor amongst all men. And, uh, and so the next day we did that. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Sicily and Pamphylia, we came unto Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexander sailing, sailing into Italy, and we put, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against uh, uh, Sintodus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmon, and hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, listen to me, now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, you see, you need to learn to follow the Holy Ghost. I'm waiting on a good amen. You'll get this in just a second. Uh, 
because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, now we read here, uh, 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 when sailing was now dangerous, said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. Uh, nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. I want you to write down something for your journey, for you to make it to the end of your journey. Number one, who are you going to listen to? Hello, somebody. The centurion listened to the master and owner of the ship. Well, he's a captain. See, you may think, well, I, I mean, well, first of all, uh, uh, this guy's uh, a, a prisoner. He's one of them crazy people. We've heard about him. You, you, we need to listen to the master. He, he, he stands up and says, well, I perceive. You know, Paul was a troublemaker. Come on. I preach a message entitled, Are You a Pest? How many of you know what a pest is? Huh? It's like a roach. Can't get rid of them. They're everywhere. Always showing up. Come on. You, you, you remember the story. He goes to stand before Agrippa and everything. And, oh, and, and see, here's the thing. They said, and they always give him smooth lips, sugar lips. You, you know, preachers. Uh, oh, oh, King Agrippa, oh, ain't nobody like you, King. Under your great reign, under your great leadership, we've enjoyed such quietness. Read it. Oh, you ain't nobody like you, oh, oh King. You, oh, oh, but this fella, under you, King Agrippa, man, you speak well, man, and, and we've never enjoyed such a blessing. Oh, but this fella, we found him to be a pestilent fella, a ringleader. Stirs people up. Oh, but you see, that's why. See, people want to sit under them kind of preachers. Oh, sugar lips. You know, Pastor, that was such a that was such a good word you brought today. That nah, wasn't no word. That was flattery. He's a wife beater, and you made him feel good. Should have punched him out. The other day I marked a man in my church. I'd been dealing with him for 11 minutes. I won't go into all the de details. And I said, well, this morning I want to mark a... Uh, uh, and and so, uh, after he wasn't there, afterwards I went over to his house and everything. He said, I heard you, I heard you mark me in the church. I heard you call me a pervert. I said, that ain't true. He said, it ain't? I said, no, I called you a pervert. <laughs> Come on. You know, you read that in the book of Acts, in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. See, we, don't, we really don't conduct church like we should sometimes. Oh, Lord have mercy. Come on, somebody. Paul writes a letter because, he, you know, he was away. He said, look, I, I'm not there, but I'm going to act like I'm there in spirit on this. He said, and so here's, here's what you need to address. It's been commonly reported amongst you that there's somebody... You, you know, who's committed, and I'm paraphrasing, who's committed a sin that even the heathens don't even mention. And he said, and y'all puffed up. Rather, you ought to deal with that thing. Now, I, after I dealt with it, I said, now, when he comes back, let me tell you what we're going to do. We know it now. He's ashamed, all this kind of stuff. I said, now, we're going to have a father's heart, but if you've got a brother's attitude, go find you another church. I don't want you in here. See, a father's heart wants to restore. 
I don't have a problem restoring when people have repented, come on somebody, and, and, and made it right in their godly sorrow and what have you. Because uh, 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 let me tell you something, you don't want your life up on the billboard. But when we genuinely right now, we ought to be there to encourage, praise God, uplift, and bring them through their darkest hour. Come on, that's good preaching, David. And so here we, we, we find uh, he, he, he stands up, and, and Paul's not a, a, a captain. Paul hadn't been out on the open seas. And the centurion, he believes the professional. See, that's our problem. We don't listen to the preacher. We don't listen to the Holy Ghost-inspired messenger from God, especially when we don't like what we hear. Uh, well, he's a professional. He's a lunatic. He's a troublemaker. He's the captain of the ship. Besides, Paul don't want to make it to Rome. That's just, that's just a trick to get, 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 get him off this ship. Come on, somebody. So number one, for you to make it. And the whole point is this, Acts 28, we get saved. The Gentiles get to hear the message. The purpose is fulfilled. God wants you to fulfill your purpose. But I'm going to tell you something right now. You're not getting there until you learn to listen to the man of God that God's placed over you. Even when it contradicts the professional, educated, graduated, Ph.D., uh, certified, uh, it, it's going to seem like that man. I mean, come on, he, he don't know nothing. No, he's speaking by the Holy Ghost. Turn around and tell somebody, say, well, who are you going to listen to? So he goes on, nevertheless, believe the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not yet commodious to winter, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly. See, circumstances are going to make that man of God look like he's a liar. I, I tell you, we don't need to be sailing. I perceive this ain't the way to go. This ain't how to handle it. Uh, because even the, 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 the time for sailing be dangerous, but the, the captain said, ah, it'll be all right. And the man of God said, no, you don't need to go. Well, I'll be doggone if the wind don't start blowing sweetly and softly to make that man of God just look like he's an idiot. There'll be times in your life that the man of God's going to speak to you and say, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't go that way. And it's going to look like, well, he missed it. He missed it. Man, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Everything's falling in line. Everything is there. Yeah, but you was told by the man of God, don't do it. That ain't God. I got a saying, everybody knows me. Uh, I've had it for, for years and years and years. When I hear something and, and the Holy Ghost speaks to me, I don't care who's around, I said, that ain't God. I, I remember when they, they, they uh, tried to get me to go up to Kansas City, the Kansas City prophet. Oh, they're prophesying to one another, and Paul Kane and Mike Bickle and and, and uh, Bob Jones, and oh, there's a oh, there's mighty men of God. They they prophesying all this guy and, and the Holy Ghost. I said that ain't God. I said that, that I said they're not men of God. Now, David, see, I've always been a stick in the mud. I, I, I mean, I I don't get along too well, and, and sometimes I kind of like that. But other times, it kind of hurts my feelings. Come on, we all like to be loved and accepted. And, 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 and uh, Hello, somebody. I, I said, hey, God. Now, David, see, you just shoot your mouth off sometimes. Then what is it? I remember uh, uh, when I was in uh, um, uh, Brother Swagger's office. 
He called me boy and everything else. And so the Holy Ghost speaks to me. And, and, and I said, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. He did. I ain't going to tell the story. I, I, I'm talking about Brother Swaggart. He's reaching the world. He, he got the largest ministry in the world. Ain't nobody touched, ain't nobody touched him to this day, what, what he accomplished. But I'm loudmouth David. I'm out picketing abortion clinics. I'm out keeping boy George from coming to Baton Rouge, so they, they call me a lunatic. You, 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 amen. And uh, I know personally, as a young man in my, in, in, it was in my church, and he was over there, bus ministry and everything, and, and um, I won't name the name, but they called him outside into the hallway, and, said, and they were talking about me, the whole staff. They said, let me tell you something. That David Diamond is a lunatic. You need to tell everybody to stay away from him and his church. I'm telling you. And so his number one, one of his number one men called this young man out in the, in the hallway, and he said, look, I'm going to tell you something. He said, I don't know David Diamond personally, but I know he's a man of God. We need to keep our mouth off of him. He said, I can tell you this. What's going on in that office ain't God trying to, you know, destroy me. And uh, that, that, that happened. So I'm, I'm in a meeting. We all set up scripturally and everything else. And so he's calling me boy and son and partner. And uh, I think you're a lunatic. And so I'm, you know, I'm sitting there taking it all. My country boy in me wants to jump up and just whoop him. I, I believe I could have took him. Uh, but, you know, I ain't the thing to do. You subdue that flesh. And so he, he's insulting me and everything else. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost speaks to me and said, tell him this, he's in sin and I know it and I'm going to bring his ministry to nothing. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm sitting there now. He's railing on me and you, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I know the voice of the Lord. But when, when, you, when God speaks to you something pretty heavily, you kind of even question yourself. He's men of God know what I'm talking about. And so I'm sitting there. Well, I got to make sure that ain't me. That ain't the country boy, you know, uh, striking back. You know, you, 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 you poison my dog. I will shoot your cat. Uh, you know, you, you come to me. I, you, you know what? You got to be careful about all that stuff. And so I'm sitting there and saying, "Oh God, what?" You know, to myself. And I mean, God won't leave me alone. And then, then I spoke up. I said, "Brother Roy, who was senior." Baton Rouge at that time. That Jim, Jimmy knew and everybody knew. And, and I said, uh, Brother Roy, I said, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. And, and Brother Swagger said, He did? Well, why don't you just tell all of us what the Holy Ghost, what the Holy Spirit told you? I said, I will. Now everybody's sitting around. And I said, God told me you're in sin. And if you don't repent, God's going to bring you ministry to nothing. And it took his breath away from him for just 30 seconds, maybe. You see, Roy, he's a lunatic. He's crazy. He don't belong in the ministry, much less behind a pulpit. Blah, 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 blah. And so I, I stood up, and I said, uh, uh, Brother Roy, for me, this meeting's over. Uh, it's not going nowhere. And I said, you know I hear from God. And I said, uh, that's what God told me. And so I, I walked out. And right behind me came Brother Roy. He said, David, my God, do you know what you just did? I said, well, no, not really. He said, you just told the largest minister in the world, son, that he's in sin. And you didn't even tell him what sin. You didn't say he was a drunk or this. He, he said you. I said, well, that's because the Lord didn't tell me what the sin was. None of my business. He just told me to tell him, you're in sin, and if you don't repent, God's going to bring you none. Well, you know how long it took to, to take place? Three and a half years. You know who looked like an idiot in Baton Rouge? You know who looked like a fool? You know who looked like he, uh, that Brother Swagger was right, that I was a lunatic and all this kind of stuff? Hello, somebody. Sometimes, honey, you just got to stand, uh, stand the heat. 
three and a half years later, came on the TV. <laughs> of course, I was sitting in the living room, and my phone rang. You know who it was? Brother Roy. He said, my God, David, God did speak to you. I said, yeah, I didn't know it was that bad, though. And I said, I'm going to tell you something else, Brother Roy. You watching it on TV? He said, he said, yeah, that's very, very touching. I said, it ain't real. He said, what? I said, that ain't real. That, that, that's uh, damage control. He's not sincere. He said, what are you saying? I said, in less than six months, he's going to be caught again. He said, what? I said, oh, yeah. Five and a half months later, boom, he's busted again. Somebody shout amen. You see, let me tell you something. This, this gospel, it, it's not an easy road, saints. This walk with God is not an easy road. Come on, slip your hand up. You've been through your battles. You've been through your tests. You've been, uh, the world thinks you're an idiot when you really stand on the Word of God. When, you're talking, when they wanted to do open heart surgery on me and I told that doctor, and, 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 and without going into it, he said, we're taking you down to emergency surgery. I said, no. I said, uh, I said, Doc, you see them tennis shoes over on that dresser? He looked over. I said, I'm putting them on my feet, and I'm going home. He said, you'll be a dead man before you get out of the state of Alabama. I said, maybe so. Well, I'm still here. That's 30-something years ago. Somebody, oh, you ready for this? Let me, let me tell you this. Oh, God's good. Now, how many of you know when you have a heart attack, your heart secretes a certain enzyme into your blood? It, 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 it will not show up unless your heart goes into stress. And, and when it does, a certain enzyme is released into your body to help try to fight. Well, I had a major. They want to do emergency surgery. I got back, went to a spirit field uh, uh, heart doctor. He had all the records. He said, oh, oh he said, uh, he said, Brother David, you had a heart attack. I went through tests and everything else. Well, three years later, I went back, had another test. He said, Brother David, you got the heart of a 40-year-old. And so anyhow, you know, and of course, every time I'd take a, 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 every time I'd take a, a, a physical, they'd run the EKGs. Now, you finna shout on this one, see. And I said, what God does, he does well. I said, I want y'all to know, God not only healed me, he made me whole. So last year, I went for my physical checkup, spirit field doctor. They ran the EKG. He came back in. He said, Brother Dan, I'm going to run another EKG on you. I said, anything wrong? He said, oh, no. He said, but i got to run another EKG on you. He has all my medical records. Every time I've ever gone for a physical checkup, you know what happens when the EKG is taken? A bleep, a blip will come up. You know why? Because it runs across your heart to where your heart was in trauma, and it leaves a scar. It's there forever. If you don't believe it, go ask medical doctors. And so, is, now if, it, if you had a real bad heart attack, it's a bigger bleep. So he came back, and he said, well, he said, I know your testimony. He said, let me put the finishing touch on it. I said, what's that? He said, I've ran three EKGs on you. He said, you know, Brother David, when you have a heart attack, you have scar tissue, whether it be small or whether it be large. He said, I want you to know there ain't a scar tissue nowhere in your heart. It's like you never had one. Somebody slip your hands up and said, ah, 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 said, ah, 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 I believe. I believe. Yeah, hallelujah. That's reading the angels fixing to come to your house. Oh, yeah, you're fixing to get a visitation. Sha -la 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 -la, because you said, I believe. Oh, hallelujah. And God's going to take care of that situation. -ra -ba -ba -ra -sa -ta. See, there's something been hanging around, don't need to hang around. God's going to send an angel to visit you, praise God, and boot that sucker right out. Hallelujah. Uh, now, now, I'm not talking about your husband, uh, un unless he needs to be booted out. Somebody shout Amen. And see, see, God, was I embarrassed? Did I look like an idiot? What did people think about me? 
in Baton Rouge for the next three and a half years. See? So you just, just hold on. Let God fight your battles. Can I get a good amen? And see, one thing I still have, I got my integrity. I still got my testimony. Can I get a good amen? And, and, and so there will be times that it'll all turn around, it'll, it'll make you look like you lied. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, you need to under, underline this, see, when you disobey the man of God, when you don't listen to the authority that's over your life, I don't care what, how softly the wind blows. Not long after. Another saying I've had ever since I got saved. A little time will tell. Just a little time will tell. But not long after there arose against it a temptuous wind called uh, 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 Eroclodon. In other words, like a typhoon. Honey, everything in your life will go upside down. You'll, you'll enter in a time of your life, it seems like you ain't getting out of this storm. This storm lasted for days. So number one, turn around and tell somebody, say, yeah, it's very important who you're going to listen to. Number two, verse 21, says this. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night. There he goes again. You know, crazy man. Now, now, now there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Turn around and tell somebody it's very important who you get on the ship with. It's very important who you sail sailing with. Oh, there's so many people, you know what I'm talking about, especially in this hour. You know why they go to church? You know, you know how they pick a home church? It's closer to their house. Come on, somebody. Well, it's just convenient, more convenient. Or they go because they got a, a great nursery where you can drop your rebellious kids off and get a little peace of mind instead of dealing with your kids. Come on, somebody. Oh, I tell you, they, they got a great children's church. Why don't you have them in service with you? Why don't we have our kids in service while we're praising God and, and they can see tears rolling down mama's cheeks or, or daddy's cheeks and they, they, they say, look, we ra I raised all my kids in church. Yeah, they took their little fire trucks and, 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 and their little toys and everything else and little coloring books and everything else, uh, but they didn't color on the seats. They didn't bang the, uh, the, uh, they didn't bang the, the toys on the chair. They didn't get up and, 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 and drive in their 18-wheeler on the altar. And you just sitting back there so spiritual. You you just glad to get rid of them for a while. Here's how dying. Here's how all our kids be with us, you know. And here's dying. You don't be praising God. You don't get out of line. Dying do this right here. Oh hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Pow! Oh pow! Oh hallelujah! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And look, we, we look, look, look. They, they can get on the floor and they can color and and, and watch this. You you you'll see it if, if you'll try. It. Look, they'll, they'll, they'll be down there on the floor, you know. Man, they, they playing with their they playing with their truck or whatever, or they coloring, and then all of a sudden they'll do this because something's happening. The preacher said something or something, and they'll go this like this, and then they'll go back to color and everything else. They can tell you more of what the preacher said than you can. Somebody shout amen. 
But you see, when they're in church with you and the Spirit of the Lord is moving and everything else, they, little Johnny and little Susie, they, they're going to look up and there's Mama crying or there's Mom and Daddy taking them down the altar, you know, and putting their arms around them and, and praying with them or praying over them, you know. And, of course, they're looking around, picking their nose. Uh, come on. Well, that's all. Who cares? Oh, God can touch them while they're picking their nose. I, 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 all, all our kids, and you know, I tell them, uh, and, and look, boy, they, they, boy, man, they'll be clapping, and I get their attention. I love kids. See, and I want to inspire them. And so they'll be over there, and they'll be trying to do something, and, I, and I'll look over, and I'll say, <laughs> and oh, they'll just grin, and boy, then they get into it. Isn't that how we ought to be going to church? It's, it's important who you sail with. Somebody that'll stand up in the midst of your trouble. Somebody that'll stand up in, in your most dangerous, difficult times and say, hey, don't worry. It's going to be all right. For I done heard from God. Hallelujah. I want you to know in my prayer time, an angel walked in and opened my closet door and said, I need to talk to you. Where are those preachers today? Where are those ministers that said an angel visited me or God spoke to me? No, people don't want to sit under that because they're afraid God may tell your business to them. I wish you'd have took up an offering before I preached. I don't know if I'm going to get much if I finish this thing. Somebody, somebody said, I don't care. Hallelujah. Money ain't never meant nothing to me. Somebody said, I don't need your money, but you need to give it to me. I, I, that's another message in itself. That's the truth. But he said, uh, uh, be of good cheer. It's going to be all right. Is this helping anybody? You need to, number one, who are you going to listen to? Number two, who are you going to sail with? And watch this, Acts 27, 26. Wherefore, sirs, he, we jump down there. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Uh, you know, he goes on down, and boy, it gets tough. I mean, that journey gets tough. They start throwing things off the boat. Uh, it's another message in this that I preach on another kind of uh, avenue. Uh, they start throwing everything off the ship. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something. When you go through your tough times, don't throw your purpose overboard. If you ain't careful, you start th throwing everything out, and God didn't want you to throw some things out. But because you're in fear. Hello? But that's another message. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Look at the next verse. How be it, how be it, we must be cast upon a certain island. Slip your hand up and, there's a, and say, there's just certain places i got to go through. There's certain places that God needs for me to stop off at or, 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 or to visit or to be at. We may not like them, but there's... There's purposes for it. And you know the story. Hello. Goes on down further. And a man who was the chief of the island was sick and he got healed. See, God knows exactly where to send you. Sometimes you think, you, you may be thinking the storm done blowed us off course and we don't know where in the world we at. Don't worry, honey. God's directing you. If you sailing with you sailing with the right person, you're going to be at a certain place for a certain purpose. And the last thing I'll close saying this. Acts 27, verse 31. Turn around and tell somebody, say, stay with the ship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except this in verse 31, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Now, I know these pastors know as well as I do. Been in any length of time at all. 
There's people that came to your church and then they left. And they go into hell. Because they didn't stay with the ship where God planted them. That's a hard message. Most people ain't going to say it. I had two pastors in my life. My pa-in-law. That's tough. Let me tell you, it's tough to have a, a, a real pastor in your life. Somebody that will correct you and, you, you know, love you at the same time, rebuke you. And, and what, but it's tough having your pa-in-law. I, I mean, that's tough. He felt like he could just double dip. You know, he, he fussed at me and, and, and embarrassed me and, and everything. I mean, my pa-in-law was something else. Thank God for him. I mean, a man of God. Oh, but did he upset me. Woo! He, he, he got on us one time. He said, let me tell you all something. He said, God ain't pleased with you. You need to be stepping out by faith and letting God use you in the gifts of the Spirit. He said, there's a, those of you, you need to be given a message in tongues and others need to be interpreted and others need to be flowing in this. He said, use your faith. Start stepping out. I expect that to start happening. I said, man, I said, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the, about the third service, man, the Spirit of the Lord was moving and somebody jumped up. You tie my tie, I tie your tie, we all have a bow tie, high tie. You know, some message in tongue. Brother, I knew I had the interpretation. I just knew it. I mean, the place was packed. You tie my tie, I tie your tie, we have a bow tie, high tie. Who stole my Honda? Who stole my Honda? Who stole my Honda? And I jumped, I jumped up. I jumped up and I said, yay! You know, because I've been around Pentecostal people. Come on, you've been you around, be around Pentecostal people uh, long enough, there's two things you're going to hear. Yay and Shondai. <laughs> Come on. And so, so I, I'd kind of heard it, you know, uh, hearing other people, so I knew how to start off. Yay! Yay! And you got, you got, to, you got to say it like you mean it. You can't say, yay. You know, you got to put that emphasis. <laughs> so, and I got a voice. And I said, yay, 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 the Lord would say. And my father-in-law stood up and said, David, shut up and sit down. That ain't God. <laughs> right there. Right there in the church. He didn't say, uh, now, 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 David, just hold on and, and, and let's just let the Spirit of the Lord continue. No, he said, David, sit down and shut up. That ain't God. I said, oh. Listen, I was obedient. I was, I was obedient. I shut up and I sat down. And I guarantee you, you could have fried bacon on my head. I was so hot. Oh, I, oh but you'd have never known it. Hallelujah. Shonda. We got in the car. I shut, waving everybody. Hallelujah. See y'all Sunday. Praise the Lord. I shut that door. Darian, is your daddy a little sis man? I said, I can't believe he told me, sit down, shut up, David, that ain't God. Uh, praise the Lord, we'll see you all later tonight. <laughs> and all the way home, I said, what's the matter with him? Uh, is he crazy? He, 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 he gets up there and he tells us, uh, God ain't pleased with y'all. Y'all need to start uh, stepping out by faith uh, and, and letting God use y'all and give messages in tongues and interpretation of tongues. So I get up and I'm starting to He says to me, I, I mean, I'm getting louder and louder. He says to me, shut up, sound, David. Hey, God. I said, has he lost his mind? David, you need to settle down. I said, no, I, no, no, I don't need to settle down. I, I, he needs to get a new brain. Man, I'm, I'm railing. I'm hot. So we go in the house. We only live about four or five miles from the church. Get in the house, and Diane says, David. And we see, she starts talking like that. I know something's up. She said, David. She said, you know what you got to do. I said, Diane, don't start preaching and telling me what I need to do. 
She said, well, I'm going to tell you anyhow. She said, you need to go over to Daddy's house and wash his feet and tell him you're sorry. I said, you know something? You're right. I need to go wash his feet with boiling water. That's what I need to do. She said, well, you better, you better obey God. I said, okay. So now the Holy Ghost starting to really deal with me. So I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to say? I don't know what's going to happen. So I go over there and I knock on the door. He opens the door. And I'm going to say, Dad, could I talk to you? He said, I've been waiting on you. The Lord spoke to you, didn't he? I said, no, he spoke to Diane. Now watch this. I'm telling you, he's a man of God. He said, Alma is Alma. He called her Alma. Alma, you got that tub of water ready? See, he knew. Honey, I knelt down there, started washing his feet, started bawling and squalling. Come on, somebody. You got to obey God. I had two pastors in my life. And then when, 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 when we left North Louisiana and went down to South Louisiana, I sat under Brother Roy Stockshill for two years. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you again. It's important who you sail with. And can you stay with the ship when it looks like the preacher is about to have you drowned? Come on, somebody. It's always the preacher's fault. You want to be an angel one day and the devil next? Be a pastor. Oh, pastor, pastor, you meant so much. I don't know what I do, pastor. If it wasn't for your ministry, I would touch my... I tell you, I ain't going back over there that pastor. <laughs> Stay with the ship. Of course, you know, it broke up. They ran, almost ran aground. The ship broke apart. Listen, I don't care how you have to get to your destiny, your destination, your purpose. Some of us, we might have to float to shore on a piece of wood, but it's still part of the ship. It's so easy to run. It's so easy to, to, to take another avenue. And it seems like when you do, see, I knew this was God because it's all working out. It's all smooth. Or just wait a while. See, what you want is this. You don't mind the storm if you're with the right person. Because you will make it. And you know what happened? Honey, they were laden with gifts and everything to finish their journey. By who? By the barbarians. They loaded us down with more than we needed. And I can tell you, after 46 years, I've been on a few ships. I happen to be the captain of them. I've been through the storm. I've been when it broke up. Come on. But I tell you, if you can keep the faith and believe, you'll make it. And one of the greatest events that you and I really rejoice over is what? He made it to Rome. That journey, the devil wanted to destroy everything because, because of his faithfulness and God's providence, he made it, and you and I are sitting here tonight because of it. The Jews rejected, and he said, I'm going to the Gentiles because they will hear. Slip your hand up and give the Lord a clap offering. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Brother Bob, would you play something? Ila la la mosita la. Let's just, let's just, uh, let's just wait on the Lord a minute. Hallelujah. Shiba la na 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 muruma na. You can work a miracle, Jesus. You can work a miracle. 
You can work a miracle, Jesus. Work one for me. You see, I've tried and I've tried. I just can't make it alone. You can work a miracle, Jesus. Work one for me. You can work a miracle, Jesus. Say it. You can work a miracle. Oh, you can work a miracle, Jesus. Come on, say it. Work one for me. You see, Lord, I've tried and I've tried every which way. But it just don't work out for me. Oh, but you can work a miracle, Jesus. Lord, would you work one for me? Slip your hand up and say, Lord, I need a touch. I need an answer. I need a, just a little uplift. And I know you know me. I know you see me. Because you said I'm more important than a little sparrow. Slip your other hand up and say, Lord, I'm sorry for listening to the master instead of the preacher. Lord, I'm sorry for listening to the seemingly expert instead of your servant. I'll stay with the ship no matter how rough it gets.